Hello and welcome back once again to now the final lecture on the topic of the kinematics of plate tectonics in the geodynamics course. In this lecture we're going to be talking about plate motions on a sphere. So up until this point we've been dealing with describing plate motions on a flat planet and of course the earth is not flat and so we can actually describe the motions of plates over longer distances much more accurately using the geometry of a sphere. We have two lecture goals in this case. The first is to present spherical coordinates. When we start talking about moving plates around on the surface of a spherical planet, it becomes easiest to describe those motions using a different coordinate system called spherical coordinates. And probably you already are somewhat familiar with this, although you might not know it. Then after that, we're going to explain how to calculate the distances and the relative plate velocities for plates moving on a spherical Earth. So as we've seen, we've been dealing with describing plate motions on a flat Earth, but we know the Earth isn't flat. It's also not a perfect sphere, but it's pretty close. It's a lot closer to being a sphere than it is to being flat, certainly. And um, if we're going to describe motions on this spherical Earth, the easiest thing for us to do is to talk about displacements using spherical coordinates. And so what you're looking at here in the figure on the left is an example of a pole of rotation P, and that's a point about which plates are rotating with respect to one another at some angular velocity omega, and we'll get into what those mean in a little bit more detail in just a moment. Uh, but the idea is that we're now talking about plate motions on a spherical surface. Now spherical coordinates, as I mentioned, in a lot of cases I think they're more confusing than, uh, than they need to be. I think some people just think they can't understand spherical coordinates because you've got different letters instead of what you're used to. Most of the time what we're looking at when we do math in math classes or in most geological applications are Cartesian coordinate systems, x, y, and z, or in many cases simply x and y on a 2D um, surface. We've got these two coordinates, x and y, that are perpendicular to one another, and we're very comfortable and familiar with those. When you start looking at spherical motions, of course, it's a lot easier actually to describe things using spherical coordinates and so we're going to use different letters but the ideas aren't really that complicated as you'll come to see. As I mentioned we're using these different letters. We're going to use R, theta, and phi when we talk about spherical coordinates. So we have a picture here of a Cartesian grid x, y, and z and um, how it relates to the letters R, phi, and theta in spherical coordinates. First, we can start off with just some basic definitions. R is going to be what we use to refer to the radius. That's going to be the distance between the center of our sphere and some point. We're already familiar with the concept of a radius from looking at circles. Um, so hopefully that's not any big shock that we can do the same thing on a sphere. Theta is used to represent colatitude. And so it's actually very similar to the latitude when we think about latitude and longitude of positions on the surface of the Earth, except colatitude starts at the geographic North Pole. So if we're thinking about the Earth, we would have a colatitude of zero degrees at geographic North, and it would go down 180 degrees to the South Pole. Now, the letter phi or psi um, is used to represent east longitude. This is something that's actually probably quite familiar to you already, because if we went to the prime meridian and started going east, and tracking the longitude, um, it would be exactly the same thing as the east longitude. Here going from zero at the prime meridian to 360 degrees, which takes you all the way around the Earth and back to where you started. So latitude and longitude are in here. It turns out that you're probably actually somewhat familiar with spherical coordinates already from knowing latitude and longitude. It's just the radius of the Earth doesn't vary that much. So most of the time when we describe our position on the surface of the Earth, we don't worry about how far we are from the center of the Earth, we just worry about our latitude and longitude. Okay, so if we want to describe plate motions on the surface of the Earth, one of the key ideas is that we can describe the motion completely using Euler's theorem. And what this means is that if we find a pole of rotation P, as shown here in the picture, and an angular velocity, so rotation of so many degrees per unit time, of two plates with respect to one another, we can actually completely describe plate motions using that. 
So if we know the position, latitude and longitude of some point P of, an, of a pole of rotation, and we know the angular velocity, either in degrees per year or radians per some other time unit, um, we can use that to describe completely the motion between the plates A and B as shown in the picture here. You can locate the position of this Euler pole P if you have spreading ridges by using transform faults. It turns out that transform faults will, small, will form small circles around the point P, and so you can actually use that to find the position of P, and you can calculate what omega is using seafloor uh, magnetic anomalies like what we saw in the first lecture. So just with those two simple observations, we can figure out where this point is and what the rate is that the two plates are rotating with respect to one another. Now, here's where things get slightly more complicated. If we are sitting at some point on the surface of the Earth, and we say, well, we know the position of a pole of rotation, and we want to say, okay, what is the relative velocity between the two plates, V? We can calculate the relative velocity at some distance from the pole of rotation, P, using this relatively simple equation here, where v is equal to omega, which is the angular velocity, times a, in this case the radius of the Earth, times the sine of this angle, delta. And delta, if you can see it here in the figure, is the angle that goes from the center of the Earth, from point P, the pole of rotation, over to our position a, where we are trying to calculate our relative velocity. So in order to solve this right now, we need to be able to figure out what this value is for the angle delta. That angle can be found using the co-latitude and east longitude. Okay? Again, if we're on the surface of the Earth, the radius is not going to be varying, but our position, of course, our latitude and longitude, or co-latitude and, co and, and east longitude um, of both the pole of rotation and plate margin, of course, will be different. So, if we know those two things, if we have our pole of rotation P here, and it has its co-latitude theta, and uh, in this case, psi, and we know our position A of the some point along the plate margin with its co-latitude theta prime and psi prime as its east longitude, we can now go about calculating the angle D, or delta. You can do that using this equation here. Um, I'm not going to give the kind of derivation of how you get to this equation, but simply show it. And as you can see here, you have the cosine of delta, and then everything on the right side is a function of the co-latitude of the two points and the east longitude of the two points. Again, just be aware that when you start doing this stuff, um, if you have positions that are given in regular latitude, you'll want to convert those to co-latitude as 90 degrees minus the latitude of the point you're interested in. And if you're curious, if you want to know the distance, along the surface of the Earth between this point P and the point A. Oh, it's actually a relatively simple thing. Once you've calculated what delta is, it's simply the radius of the Earth, A, times delta, and that will give you the surface distance between those two points. So that's it. This is really meant to kind of get you prepared for the exercises that we'll work on uh, in class on Thursday. So go ahead, as usual, take your quiz, and see how much uh, you've absorbed, and I'll see you in class on Thursday.